Today's mini review goes back three years when we first moved into this house. And what you're looking at here is the underside of the center aisle. The original idea was to have a string of blue LEDs which would wash the whole of the um, side of the center aisle and I thought that would look rather nice. I finally started the project and this is actually an aluminium extrusion with a uh, frosted sort of plasticky piece to diffuse the light. And the original idea, as I said, was to use blue LEDs, but I happened to have a string of white LEDs and I thought I'd try them. And I actually prefer them. I think blue is going to be just a bit too intense. So I've actually done that now. And all I'm waiting for now is a small 12 volt AC adapter, hence the little wires sticking out in the corner, to run it properly. Now in the meantime, I've done a rather foolish thing. I've had a flick through the Banggood catalogue, as I tend to do, and I found these. Now these are RGB LEDs, and they were on offer at the time, and the whole package, which I'm going to show you in a minute, was just over 11 New Zealand dollars. Now the offer's finished, but you can still buy this package for 13 New Zealand dollars which I would suggest is pretty good value. Included in the kit is this little controller because being RGB you've got to have some way to control the LEDs and the end here has a small infrared diode to detect the remote control. Now this is the remote control and it's an unusually good one. I've seen several kits where it's half this size and it really looks smart and it included a little battery which you normally pay a couple of dollars extra for. So the whole, this whole lot would cost you now just over $13 delivered free. Now this is inside the little driver box and it's a bit of an anti-climax I'm afraid. I was expecting to find something much more exciting but all there is in fact is these two chips which are unmarked and a couple of small resistors and I think that's a diode there and that's about it. This end connects to the LEDs themselves and this is actually a little infrared diode which receives the information from the remote control. It says on the box that it needs a 12 volt drive and will supply a maximum of 6 amps which is well under the rating for this particular item. As these LEDs are designed to work from 12 volts they tend to be in series parallel combinations. This is where you can cut, you can cut after three diodes I move the camera along slightly you can clearly see two cut marks. If you cut in between you mess up the whole thing. Now one thing about these the diodes do not have a white chip inside so whereas the colors are excellent the white is obviously made up of RGB uh, red green and blue and it doesn't make a terribly convincing white. If you look at them you can clearly see it's made up of the three colours but from a distance of about a metre or so it looks as near white as you would expect to find other than if you pay more and get a, a, a true white chip. Right, connecting up couldn't be simpler. On each side there is an arrow so you can't get these mixed up and I would suggest it will probably be fatal if you did mix them up and touch wood I haven't done that yet so <laughs> as this will be a live test um, well it could be good or it could be a burst of fire and smoke now I know you're all wishing for a burst of fire and smoke but I did have to purchase these with my own money this is not a free gift from Banggood so I will 
give you an honest impression of whether these are any good or not. Now for test purposes I'm just using this standard 12 volt 1 amp power supply. I cannot imagine it would use more than 1 amp but um, we will test this a bit later on. So here we go and you can already see now as I've said and other reviewers have said many times these lights do not strobe like that. Um, it's purely the effect of the shutter in the camera and it's not only iPhones that have this, this problem but in real life I can assure you there is no flicker on that whatsoever. Now it is, it is actually quite hard to film these. Um, I've tried to put them in an area of high ambient light and I've tried messing with the exposure on the camera and this is about the best I can get it but the, because the diodes have a quite a pinpoint of light it's actually quite hard to um, get the camera A to focus and to actually get a proper colour rendition because the the natural tendency of the camera to want to balance the white um, makes it a bit of a mess. I'll go through the prime colours, red, green, blue and white. Now from the distance I am and probably from where the camera is that's quite a convincing white. Well I've tried doing this with the uh, lights on and uh, it, it just swamps out the camera but you can clearly see the dye there with the various colour chips on it and the small limiting resistor and one for each colour obviously and, and of course a different value for each colour because each diode requires a different um, voltage to work. Now this is a close up of the remote or part of it now I don't propose to go through all the colours because I'm sure you realise that you can get virtually any colour mix you can imagine. I just went through the prime colours just then. Um, but you can also have fades and all sorts of other stuff here. Flashing and so basically whatever you wanted to do this is well capable of doing it. Right I've got the meter on in circuit now. The maximum current I found this will draw is with the white on, which is not surprisingly because as there's not a white dedicated chip, all three chips are on together. But if we now go to red, it's dropped to 740 milliamps. Green, I would suspect, is much the same, 580 milliamps. And blue, 560 milliamps and white clearly the most so I'm actually overloading this little power supply slightly um, <laughs> we won't worry about that it hasn't burst into flames yet so that's got to be good so I guess to sum up um, very good value for money and um, you will need a power supply I would suggest you get probably a a one and a half amp minimum really because I'm sure this power supply will run a little bit warm depending on what mode you leave it on. If you're going to leave it on a prime colour um, or um, anything but white one amp will be fine. This is the back of the LED strip and it contains the usual uh, sticky tape now most of these use 3M sticky tape. This uses an unknown brand. But in all honesty, I don't find the 3M one any better than the, than the generic um, one. Neither of them stick very well and neither of them stick for very long. So you generally always need to find some other way of sticking them down. What I have done in the past is put a little blob of hot glue every three or four inches and um, it just holds it down. Now they don't strictly need a heat sink because when they've been on for a while if you hold them they are there's, you can just detect that they are slightly warm. Obviously they will get hotter in the white mode as you've 
um, noticed by the current but even still they don't strictly need a heat sink but it's, it's always a good idea to mount them onto a metal strip if at all possible. Now a final point regarding the power supply. Now most people probably know that you need a special driver quote to power LEDs. Now generally this is the case because an LED is not strictly a voltage driven product it's a current driven and when you when you buy LEDs and, and connect them up normally you would need a current limited power supply obviously you don't want a 200 volt one but you tend to have say anything between 5 volts and 50 volts really depending on the type of diodes you have and you will current limit it to whatever the diode specifies now these are slightly different they're still the same sort of diodes but they are connected in series parallel and they rely on the fact the amount of current they will draw will be virtually directly proportional to the current applied that's uh, the voltage applied I should say um, now these are meant to be driven from 12 volts DC and if you put 13 volts across them they will draw proportionately higher current now as I've shown you already they do have a limiting resistor um, because if you just put 12 volts across the diode they would last a few milliseconds very bright but not last very long so if you want higher voltage you would have to put a different resistor in there now as there's a three resistors per string it's impractical so make sure depend your power supply is stabilized at 12 volts because some of the cheaper ones aren't stabilized and you'll find offload they could be 15 or 16 volts which will not make the diodes happy at all and with 12 volts on they should last a long time but don't be tempted to put more than 12 volts on if you do they will get hot which will shorten their life they'll get brighter for sure but diodes don't like getting hot this is a shot from the Banggood site and they've actually produced a better picture than I have so that's a, a, a close-up of an individual diode array now in the spec Banggood suggests a 5 amp power supply which I would have thought was a little over the top if you want to be very safe use a 12 volt 2 amp power supply and it will run cold and you'll never have any issues with it now there's the current price of $13.72 New Zealand and I say I did actually pay about $11 something for these because they were introduced at a special price but even for $13.72 delivered I would rate them anyway that's the end of this video thank you for watching it's most appreciated